Good morning. I'm Shivani, and today we're going to learn about the doctrine of territorial nexus. So, under the Article 245 of the Indian Constitution, it has been stated that the Parliament has the jurisdiction to make laws for extraterritorial operations or laws for the whole or any part of the country. The state legislature also has the jurisdiction to make laws for the whole or any part of the state. Thus, it can be said that both the union and the state have their own territorial jurisdiction to make laws. Under Article 246, it has been stated that the parliament has explicit powers to make laws for the subject matters enumerated in the union list, which is list one of the seven schedules. And the state has the power to make laws for the subject matter enumerated in the state list, which is list two of the seven schedules. Both the state and union have the power to make laws on the subject matter enumerated in concurrent list, which is list three of the seven schedules. Under Article 245 Clause 2, the Indian Constitution, if according to it, if any law is made by the Parliament regarding extraterritorial operations, no question can be raised on its validity. Thus, the validity of a legislation cannot be questioned in the case where the law made by the Parliament is regarding extraterritorial operations. In this case, a court is bound to enforce the laws made with regards to extraterritorial operations. These legislations cannot be invalidated. So, distribution of the legislative powers with respect to territory, how is it distributed? As enshrined under Article 245, Clause 1, the parliament can make laws for the whole or any part of India. Parliament also has extraterritorial jurisdiction for which it can make these laws, which cannot be invalidated on the grounds that they have no effect outside India. So, to determine this, in the case of A.H. Vadia versus Income Tax Commissioner, it was held that a question of extraterritoriality of enactment can never be raised against the Supreme Legislative Authority on the grounds of questioning its validity. It may not comply with the rules of international law or while enforcing it, practical difficulties may arise, but they are subject to the questions of the policy, which is the concern of a national or a domestic tribunal. So this leads us to the theory of territorial nexus. What does this theory of territorial nexus mean? In order to give effect to the laws made by the state for extraterritorial purposes, a nexus must be given between the object and the state. So the state legislature has a jurisdiction to make laws within its territorial jurisdiction. Territorial nexus is one such exception in which the state allows laws uh, which, uh, in which the state allows uh, laws to be made for extraterritorial operation if it is shown that there exists a nexus between the object and the state. One of such cases was Wallace Grove and Company Limited versus the Commissioner of Income Tax. In this case, a company was registered and incorporated in a state and also carried out its business in India through a sleeping partner. The firm made a staggering profit in their accounting year. Income tax authorities sought to levy a tax upon the company of the respondent. The income tax authority was challenged by the respondent, but it was held at the Privy Council that the, there existed a doctrine of territorial nexus and held the tax valid. It is said that the majority of the income was extracted from British India, which was itself a sufficient ground to establish a territorial nexus. So what do you mean by extraterritorial operations? The parliament is confirmed with the powers to make laws within its jurisdiction and beyond its jurisdiction uh, with the purpose that it has a legitimate nexus with India. So uh, legislation or laws regarding this matter comes under the ambit of the parliament as it has the power to do so. These laws cannot be questioned on its validity. If the parliament enacts any laws which doesn't establish any nexus with India, it will turn out to be ultra wise and would be considered as a law of the foreign land. This can be concluded that if a law passed in the parliament has real connection with India, it cannot be deemed or held as invalid or unconstitutional. If such law is enacted by parliament establishes no nexus with India, then it would be held as ultra wise in terms of Indian, Indian laws. So our constitution states that legislative powers which are conferred upon the parliament in order to enact the laws within a territorial jurisdiction, as well as for the purpose, may make cognizance of the extraterritorial purpose and exercise the state powers of the collective powers 
of the doctrine of public trust that states that laws enacted by parliament with respect to extra territorial obligations shall be enacted only for the purpose of safeguarding the welfare and security of india which directly concludes that there is no law which is made for the purpose of extra territorial operations if there is no nexus of that particular law with india so the role of extra territorial nexus and role of territorial nexus in indian legislation what does it include it has been stated before like i have told before mentioned that the jurisdiction of the parliament extends to the whole of india or any part of india so these laws cannot be questioned or or cannot be held as invalid however all the laws must definitely comply with the provisions of indian constitution the powers conferred to the parliament are not absolute therefore the laws made by the parliament are also not absolute for the the laws made which are in purpose of extra territorial operations are only for the purpose of outside, outside operating outside the jurisdiction or the geographical limits of india the state doesn't have the power to make laws for extra territorial jurisdiction however the this limitation of state legislature we can say that it is subjected to only one exception and that is this doctrine of territorial nexus if there it have been established a reasonable nexus between that particular object and the state then the doctrine of territorial nexus applies and the state legislatures can also make laws in which talks about this uh, extra territorial operation in one of the cases which was state of bihar versus charu prasad ji in instant case the state of bihar passed a legislation which dealt with the motive to safeguard the properties regarding the sindhu religious trust this act consists of all the trusts within the territorial limits of bihar so the respondent the uh, trust chief several of her properties in situated in bihar and in calcutta and the trust was inside the territorial limits of bihar several questions were raised with regards to the scope of this act it was held that the act passed by the state of bihar could have effect over the property situated outside the state of bihar keeping in mind that the trust must be situated within the limits of the state and there exists a sufficient nexus between the parties who are involved in that property and the state in itself in conclusion we can state that the legislative powers have been distributed into two poles one is between the center and the second is between the state their power is partitioned by the constitution so that they can have independence over their executive and legislative authority as our constitution is of a federal structure co quasi federal structure it establishes a dual polity between the union and the state therefore the parliament's power to make uh, laws pertaining to extra territorial operations are not necessarily the powers conferred to the state legislatures however in the cases where a sufficient reasonable nexus is established between the state territories territory of one state to another or outside india in such a case the doctrine of territorial nexus applies and therefore one person one party who is a party to a state in such a case uh, it limits the uh, does not limit the scope of this doctrine and therefore the scope of territorial nexus is wide and can be applied outside the territorial limits of not only this state but outside india as well the doctrine of this territorial nexus allows the effect of the law outside the territorial limits of a nation in case if there is a reasonable nexus or reasonable correlation between the state uh, or the object situated outside it thank you